time has given us and time for us to worship God and a time for us to listen to His Word. Amen? Amen. Are you now ready to receive God's blessing today? Yes. Amen? Yes. Please tell the person beside you, be ready to be blessed by the Lord. It's uh, really overflowing in our midst today. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know, last uh, feast, we discussed uh, about uh, the topic on awareness of God. Isn't it? So, uh, we said that uh, to be aware of the presence of God is that you're always confused of God's presence in your lives. So, whatever you're doing, you might be doing your household chores, you're driving your car to your work and way back home. You're very busy in your job. You are aware and you are conscious that God is watching over you. Amen? You are aware and you are conscious that God is leading you. And uh, He is there for you 24-7. And uh, we also talk about uh, our appointment with God. So do you still remember that? Our private appointment with God? So when we are having our appointment with God, we are not doing anything, right? So we're just focusing our minds and our heart totally to God. So our focus is on God, totally and completely. Before uh, leaving the topic on awareness of God, <coughs> I just want to uh, show you a, a video. Just a short uh, video. And... Uh, this would uh, further uh, uh, prove, my dear friends, that uh, God is really with us all the time, 24-7. We are ready to be blessed by this video. Come on, Greg. Heavenly Father, we love your precious name. It stands to reason that a name is just a word. Can be easily forgotten as soon as it is heard. But one name was spoken before the world's first day, and it will be here when everything that is has passed away. Delivered from the lips of God to Mary's ears on angels' wings, Jesus.
going through. You might be in tears at the moment, uh, you might be struggling at the moment, uh, but yeah, Jesus uh, is really right beside you, embracing you, and uh, even shedding a tears with you. Amen? Can we all stand up, brothers and sisters, and pray our favorite prayer at the feast? Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word, so that I can provide Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that God's blood. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful child. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Lord God, and fill our hearts to the brim, Lord God. 
that we will not go home, O God, without receiving your blessings and your love for us this day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Star, you know, and to fight for 
when we talk with each other, with the friends, um, our conversation is personal. Our conversation is intimate. There are times when I just enter his room and sit beside him and just put my arms around him or just embrace him and hug him. I've been doing that for the past 21 years already. And even at this moment, uh, yeah, I know that he's a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> but I will do it anyway. And the reason why is because my relationship with him is personal. My relationship with him is personal. When we talk with each other, it's personal, intimate, and sometimes fun. <laughs> and sometimes we argue with each other, right? With silly things, but yeah, it's normal for a father and son relationship. But the bottom is my relationship with my son is personal. Brothers and sisters, prayer is personal. Can I say it again? Prayer is personal. When you're praying to God, do you enjoy praying to God? Are you having fun, you know, when you're talking with God? Yeah. Or is it a burden, you know, is it a burden on your part? Every time you think of prayer, you know, every time you think of the appointment that is scheduled for you with God, is it a burden? Brothers and sisters, if it is a burden, maybe your prayer is not yet personal. Because prayer, brothers and sisters, You know, some people would think that Christianity is just a bunch of religious rituals or Christianity is just a bunch of religious activities or a bunch of religious rules and regulations. But first and foremost, my dear friends, I would like to tell you that Christianity is first and foremost a relationship. Christianity is a relationship with Abba. Christianity is a relationship with God. The God who insists that we should call Him Abba. Amen? It's a personal relationship with a God who insists that we should call Him Daddy. We should call Him Papa. We should call Him Daddy. And you know, some people would, uh, you know, when they pray, they want to really wear their best suit. Right? They want to wear their best gown, their best shoes. Yeah? They want to pray for God because, yeah, according to them, they are facing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And uh, they even compare it to having an appointment with the Prime Minister. For example, the Prime Minister of Australia, Kevin Rudd. <laughs> if uh, you want to have an appointment with him, of course, you're going to wear your best dress, isn't it? You're going to wear your best gown. You're going to wear your best shoes when you go to his office. And for the ladies, maybe you even visit a, a parlor to have your hair fixed, amen? And to have a good makeup so that when we, you face Kevin Rod, wow, you will be presentable before the Prime Minister. How much more, they said, how much more when you're going to face the Prime Minister of the whole universe, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, how much more that you should wear your best gown and best suit and best shoes. But brothers and sisters, this is what I would like to tell you. That before God is king in your life, before God is Lord in your life, He is your Papa. Amen? He is your daddy. <laughs> he is your Papa. He is your dad. Yet, yeah, your relationship with Him is really personal. Father and son, a father and daughter relationship. Amen? Can we give a clap offering to our God? Hallelujah. Well, if it's your preference, my dear friends, if, uh, if it's your preference to, to wear your best suit and your best gown when you're praying, go ahead <laughs> and make your day with God. Amen? Amen? If that's your preference, go ahead and, yeah, make your day with God during your appointment. And this is what I'd like to tell you. That when you go before God, go before Him the way 
way he has created. Go before him the way he has designed. Yes, God has created the rainbow with different colors and has created you with different preferences. Amen? With different tastes and likes and likes. Yeah, if you, if you prefer to wear your best suit and best gown, go ahead. Perhaps that's how God created you. That's how God designed you. The bottom line is that you go before God the way He has created you and the way He has designed you. Amen? And uh, I believe that there's no such right uh, way of praying for everyone. We need to use our personal prayer language. Amen? Amen? We need to use our personal prayer language when we pray. For example, if you are talking, then, yeah, you can talk and talk and talk before God. He likes that. Because He has created you in that manner. You know, when I pray, I really love to talk to your friends. I can pray for one hour talking to God. And that's me. <laughs> I, I'd like to talk about my feelings. I'd like to talk the struggles that I'm going through. I'd like to share to God in verbal manner. You know, those uh, uh, blessings that I'm enjoying in life. Yeah, I'd like to talk and talk and talk. And if that's your style, then go ahead. Talk and talk before God. If you want to listen to music, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Listen to 16 music during your prayer time with the Lord. The bottom line, brothers and sisters, is that prayer is personal. So if there are 35 of us here or 40, there will be 35 to 40 ways of praying to God. Amen? And yeah, use your own personal language when we encounter God in prayer. Because prayer is personal. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Lesson number two. Prayer is persistent. Say that again. Prayer, prayer is persistent. You know, in the, in the Our Father, when Jesus said, give us our daily bread. So what does it mean? That means that the, Jesus wants us to pray daily. He wants us to call our God daily. He wants us to receive our blessings daily. Jesus did not say that, you know, give us our yearly bread. <laughs> or give us our monthly bread. No. Or give us our weekly bread. He told us, give us our daily bread. Because we can never depend on the blessing of yesterday. God wants us to experience His blessings every day. Amen? Because His blessing and His love are new every day. They are new every morning. New every morning. That's God's blessing. Do you know the song, The Steadfast Love of the Lord? The Steadfast Love of the Lord never ceases. Come on, sing. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness.
Yeah, we're talking about personal appointment with God, which is persistent. Brothers and sisters, if we are encountering God in prayer, if we are having an appointment with God in prayer, my recommendation is we do it at the same time every day. The same time every day. The reason why is for us to remember our daily appointment with God. So we won't forget. Because sometimes we are forgetful people. Eh? <laughs> so we want to establish you know, an appointment with God. So uh, as a recommendation, let's do it at the same time every day. So for example, if uh, you've decided to pray at 6 o'clock in the morning, then pray at 6 o'clock in the morning. If you've decided to pray during lunch time, then pray during lunch time. If you've decided to pray before you go to bed, then pray before you go to bed. Pray before you go to sleep. So that you'll be able to remember. And that becomes a habit. Amen? If that becomes a habit, that will, be, that will come naturally. Okay? It will just come naturally. You know, when, when you reach a particular time, it will just come naturally. And yeah, you'll be able to have an appointment with God daily. You know, I have a friend back in the Philippines who decided to go on his regular exercise. So he bought a rubber shoes uh, and uh, he decided to jog around the compound of Meral. Before, when I was there, yeah, when I was still in the runway, I used to jump regularly uh, around that compound. And uh, uh, it, it is about 2.5 kilometer distance when, when you go around the compound. And this friend of mine, yeah, he decided to, to run. And, uh, you know, he, he, he ran for, I think, two hours <laughs> for the first time. And then uh, what happened to him is that, uh, yeah, when uh, he arrived home, rest and sisters, he was so exhausted. And uh, yeah, he was not able to come to work for three days <laughs> because of body pain, you know. And uh, the subject is that that was the first and the last <laughs> for him to jump, okay, because of uh, a traumatic experience. Brothers and sisters, it is better for us, you know, to pray about four minutes daily than to pray two hours in one year. <laughs> or <laughs> two hours every five years, you know? It's better for us, uh, you know, <laughs> to, to give our, you know, four minutes or five minutes or ten minutes to God daily, you know, than, than to pray two hours once every two years or once every five years. Amen? So, the key here, brothers and sisters, is really faithful. You know, I'm really old to understand this truth. I'm old to understand this truth. That the key to all success is not the quality of your feelings, but the quality of your faithfulness. Amen? The key to all success is not the quality of your feelings, but the quality of your faithfulness. The quality of your consistency. Sometimes you are excited to do this thing, to do that, and when the excitement is gone, <laughs> that's it. It's finished. But if you are faithful, my friends, whatever is happening in your life, whether you are feeling sad or you are feeling happy at that very moment, because you are faithful, you will still do it. Amen? And because you are faithful, you will achieve what you want to achieve. Do you want to succeed in your married life? You want to succeed in your career, in your finances, in your spiritual life? Then faithfulness, my dear friends, is the key. Amen? Amen? Faithfulness is the key. If we are not faithful in, uh, in fulfilling the dreams uh, that we have set for us, we can never be successful. The key, brothers and sisters, 
So how long should we pray? <laughs> That's the question, eh? How long should we pray? So my recommendation is, let's start with four minutes. Yes? <laughs> you know, last night I was computing. You know, the, the four minutes compared to 24 hours. Uh, what percentage is four minutes to 24 hours? Just 0.3%. You know? <laughs> Uh, of uh, of the time that will be spent before God compared to the time that He has given us during the whole day, and I'm sure that uh, that will not be hard to give. Amen. I encourage you, my friends, that uh, if uh, you haven't yet, uh, you know, established your appointment with God, you start tonight. Amen. <laughs> Before you sleep, Brother Edward said four minutes. Okay? <laughs> Before I sleep tonight, I need to have a personal appointment with God in four minutes. And that's uh, what we're going to discuss in the next lesson. The next lesson is that prayer has a pattern. Prayer has a pattern. So in the Our Father, the teachers told, Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. What is that? That's worship. Alright? That's worship. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What is that? That's word. Alright? Meaning to say, we'll be able to know the will of God through the word. Amen? So we'll be able to know the will of God through reading the word, through reading the scripture. Okay? And give us this day our daily bread. What is that? That's petition and that's wish. Okay? And do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. What is that? That's wash. Alright? So there are four W's in the Our Father. Okay? Worship, Word, Wish, and Wash. Okay? So you can worship God in one minute, all right? <laughs> you can you can read the word and listen to His word in one minute. You can have your wish for God in one minute, and yet allow God to wash you in one minute. So you can pray, brothers and sisters, using the fire in four minutes. Worship, word, wish, and wash. Amen. Amen. This is what I discuss one by one. Okay? So what is worship? After we brothers and sisters worship, uh, usually we, we, we thought that worship is just about, you know, lifting up our praises and our honoring and our adoration to God. Actually, worship, brothers and sisters, is a welcoming. It's a welcoming. It's God welcoming us into His love. It is God welcoming us into the ocean of His love. So that's worship. It's God welcoming us into His throne room. It's God welcoming us into His heart. That's worship. So it's God welcoming us to receive His love. It's God welcoming us to receive His blessing. It's God welcoming us to receive His healing. That's worship. Last piece, we talk about the curtain is torn, right? And yeah, because the curtain is torn, God is inviting us to come to the Holy of Holies and encounter Him in that place of worship. So worship is actually allowing ourselves to swim into the ocean of God's love. That's worship. So when we worship, brothers and sisters, we can use thanksgiving. We thank the Lord for everything that He has done to us. We thank the Lord for our good health. We thank the Lord for our family. We thank the Lord for our loved ones. Yeah. We thank the Lord for everything that is happening to us. We can use that in worship. And another is that we can sing songs of praises, like what we're singing here during worship time. Okay. Even if you're out of tune, you can still worship God. <laughs> using your voices. That's worship. And we can also read Psalms. You know? 
the book of Psalms. Eh? So, there are a lot of uh, uh, beautiful prayers in the book of Psalms which we can use to worship God. And, yeah, the rosary. <laughs> Maybe some of you, brothers and sisters, were raised up praying the rosary. And uh, maybe you've experienced at one time you're praying your rosary and uh, while reciting the rosary then you're sleeping. <laughs> you haven't yet finished uh, one decade and then yeah, you're snoring, you're sleeping. And maybe we, we witness some of our laws and not us. No? When they're praying the rosary, Hail Mary and put a phrase, the Lord is with you. You see nothing. Hail Mary, full of praise, the Lord is with you. Pakisara yung pintuan. <laughs> Friends and sisters, I would like to tell you this. That uh, the rosary is not a prayer addressed to Mary. And I just want to shock you. The prayer, the rosary, is a prayer addressed to Jesus. Again, the rosary, brothers and sisters, is a prayer addressed to Jesus. So there are three mysteries of the Holy Rosary, isn't it? Number one is the joyful mystery. Number two is the sorrowful mystery. What is the third one? The glorious mystery. And actually we have a new uh, mystery which is the luminous mystery. And uh, <laughs> the three mysteries, this was the original mysteries of the Holy Rosary. You know when you're praying the Rosary, you're actually focusing your mind and your heart on Jesus, on the life of Jesus. You know, the, the mystery of the Holy Rosary is really centered on the life of Jesus. Like, for example, the joyful mystery. Okay? The first joyful mystery is the Annunciation of the Angel Gabriel. So, the Annunciation of the Angel Gabriel. So, while reciting the Hail Mary, you are imagining that the angel Gabriel is talking to Mary. So, you, so your mind and your heart is not focused on Mary. Your mind and your heart is focused on the life of Jesus. Amen? The second joyful mystery is the visitation. So you're imagining that while reciting the Hail Mary, you're imagining that Mary is visiting Elizabeth, her cousin. Alright? And the third mystery is the birth of Jesus Christ. So you're imagining your mind about the birth of Jesus Christ, about the baby Jesus born in Bethlehem. So Rosary, my friends, is not a prayer addressed to Mary, but prayer addressed to Jesus. You pray the Rosary with Mary. Amen? So what's the background of the rosary? I'd like to share the background of the rosary. Because during the old time, you know, monks before would pray seven times a day. And they would pray the whole Psalms, the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms composed of 150 chapters. And during the time, you know, lay people would like also to imitate the monks. You know, they would like to imitate the monks praying to God during a particular day. But the problem was that during the time, those people, the lay people, were illiterate. They cannot read. Right? They cannot write. So they cannot read the Psalms. So what the monks did was they devised a means for the people to be able to use their minds and their imagination to pray. So the device, the rosary, centered on the life of Jesus Christ. Okay, how many mis how many Hail Marys are there in one mystery? Ten. 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 One decade. Ten. In 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 the whole mystery, how many? Fifty. Is that it? So uh, there are three mysteries of the Holy Rosary. So how many Hail Marys all in all? 150. Aha. So you're, you, there's already a parallelism between the 150 chapters of uh, the Psalms and the 150 Hail Marys. 
So that's uh, you know how the rosary you know started. So the people during the time, instead of reading the psalms, because they cannot read the psalms, they just pray the rosary. And the monks taught them that when they pray the rosary, they should focus their minds and their heart on the life, on the death, and on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when you pray the rosary, you're not actually praying to Mary, but you are actually praying to Jesus with Mary. Amen? Amen. 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 Can we give a call to pray to our God? Hallelujah. The Mass. So that's also another form of worship. So we Catholics have believe that the Mass is the highest form of worship. It's the highest form of worship. Because uh, in the Mass, Jesus would offer His body and blood to the Father. And all of us are witnesses of this service. So brothers and sisters, worship is very important. Again, it's a welcoming. It's God calling us, you know, to enjoy His love. It's God calling us to swim and be immersed in the ocean of His love. Amen? It's God calling us, you know, to receive His love, to receive His healing, and to receive His grace. That's worship. Okay, so let's go to the Word. <clears throat> Second minute, the word. So what do you think is the reason why do we need to read the Bible? The reason why we need to read the Bible is to transform our minds, to renew our minds. Let's read. If you win in the battlefield of your mind, you win in the battlefield of your life. Brothers and sisters, all the battles that we have fought in life, all the battles that we are fighting in life, all the battles that we will be fighting in life, all of them start from our minds. Amen? They all start in the mind. Now, if you win in your battlefield of your, of your mind, you are going to win in your battlefield of your life. If you win the battle in your mind, you are going to win the battle. Amen? Let's read it. Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes, brothers and sisters, the battle starts from our minds. And we need to win our battles in our minds if we want to win our battles in our lives. You know, we need to Saturate our minds with the Word of God. Amen? We need to immerse in the Word of God so that we will be able you know, to, to adapt the lens of Abba. You know? So that we will be able to see the things around us the way God sees the things around us. Yeah. We will be able to really succeed in life because our minds are saturated with the Word of God. Then I have a story. I read it in the internet. And uh, this is a story of uh, um, a servant of God. And his name is uh, Ravi Zacharias. He's a well known apologist, you know, a defender of the faith. Sometime in 1971, Ravi Zacharias was preaching in Vietnam and uh, he had this uh, young Vietnamese who, who was a translator of uh, his preaching so uh, he was uh, uh, he was very good in, in the English language during the time you know uh, Zacharias Rabbi Zacharias was with this uh, uh, young Vietnamese all throughout Vietnam and he had preached the word and we know the history that when uh, Vietnam fell into the hands of the communists, yes, this young Vietnamese was put in jail. And uh, it was a sad story because uh, the only book that he could read inside the prison cell was the book of Karl Marx in France and Vietnamese. And uh, he could no longer read his Bible. 
He can no longer read those spiritual readings, spiritual materials. And uh, yeah, while in jail, he was asking God, Lord, are you, are you really, are you real? Why is it that I'm suffering? If, uh, if, you're ex if, you, if you do exist, oh Lord, why is it that I'm here in prison suffering? And uh, he really missed reading his Bible. He really missed reading the Word. And yeah, at one time, he was already indoctrinated and uh, he was already confused and he's doubting about his faith of God. And he's telling God, Lord, I think tonight is my last night to pray. Tomorrow when I wake up, I will no longer pray. And then he slept. And, in, and when he woke up the next morning, my friends, uh, the jailer, the warden, sent him to clean the toilet. Okay? So you know the toilet inside the prison cell is really, uh, <laughs> it's really uh, smelly and it's really bad. The odor is really, it's really bad. And uh, you know, while, while cleaning the toilet, brothers and sisters, he noticed a paper in the trash. And uh, there were words that were written in English. Okay? And then immediately he grabbed the paper and washed it. Okay? And uh, the paper was full of faces. Huh? And he washed it and immediately put it in his pocket. And then during the night when everybody's sleeping, in the middle of the night, uh, he got his flashlight. And uh, when he attempted to read, he started trembling because it's a page in the Bible, you know? And he read Romans 8, 28. In all things, God will work for good to those whom he loved and those whom he called according to his purpose. The brothers and sisters, this is the message that he was reading and he was already crying. You know? And he said, Lord, I just prayed last night that uh, I just want to give up my faith, but here you are. You have rescued me. Brothers and sisters, the following morning, he again requested you know, the jailer to send him in the toilet and clean the toilet. And again, when he was in the toilet, he found again another page of the Bible. And... Uh, Suddenly, he, he, he just washed it and he just put it in his pocket and in the middle of the night, he read the word in the page. And it's, it states there, who can separate us from the love of God? Neither death can separate us from the love of God. Brothers and sisters, yes, he is reading, you know, a passage, a word from the Bible in his prison cell. And he requested the jailer to always send him to the toilet and clean the toilet every day. And it was to his surprise that the jailer agreed. And every day, every time he cleans the toilet, he would always collect a page of the Bible and clean it, you know, and read it during night time. And he discovered that the jailer, the warden, when he goes to the toilet every day, he uses the page of the Bible, you know, <laughs> as his tissue paper, okay? <laughs> That's why every day, you know, he found, you know, a page of the Bible, you know, full of faces, but he would clean it, you know, and uh, after cleaning it, he would keep it. And brothers and sisters, this young Vietnamese was able to recover a considerable, you know, <clears throat> volume of uh, uh, of the Bible, and <laughs> because every day you would go to the toilet and collect one page every day, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, and because of uh, God's mercy and God's love, this uh, young Vietnamese uh, was uh, given an opportunity to get out of cell, to get out of prison, and. Uh, Yes, brothers and sisters, you know, he was given, you know, uh, an opportunity to live a normal life in Vietnam. But you know, when he was already living his normal life, he planned to escape 
All right, he planned to escape Vietnam, and uh, yeah, he decided to to uh, to uh, uh, build a boat together with some men and women, and uh, yeah, when the boat is about to be finished, uh, four soldiers knock on the door of his house, and you know, these four soldiers ask the Vietnamese, "Is it true that you are going to escape? We have heard that you are going to escape." And this young Vietnamese uh, told the, the four Viet Congs, he told, he told them, no, I'm not escaping. So he lied to their friends. He told a lot of lies, a lot of uh, you know, reasons and alibis. And uh, the four soldiers were, were convinced. And, and yeah. And uh, again, when the, the four soldiers left, he was so frustrated. He was so disappointed. And he told himself, oh my gosh, I lied. And Lord, uh, just to save my life, uh, I lied uh, before the four soldiers. But if it's your will for me to tell the truth, let the four soldiers come back. And you know, my dear friends, after three hours, the four soldiers came back. <laughs> and they again knocked at the door of his house. And when they opened the, the door, he was surprised. The four vehicles are again in front of his door. And again they asked him, we really heard that it's true. You're leaving tonight and you're escaping with uh, 53 men with you. And he said, yes, we're escaping. Yes, we are leaving. Are you going to put me again to jail because of this revelation? And the four soldiers said, no, we are going to join you. <laughs> <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this is a true story. Wow. We're going to join them. <laughs> and the four soldiers joined them, dear your friends. And you know, when they were already in the high seas, they encountered, you know, a powerful storm that almost destroyed their ship. And it so happened, my dear friends, that these four soldiers were an expert sailor. <laughs> these four soldiers, they were an expert sailor. And they were able to steer the boat, you know, to a safe place. And eventually, they landed to Thailand and became a refugee in that country. And later on, this man, this young Vietnamese, became a permanent resident of the U.S. And you know, Ravi Zacharias uh, was uh, surprised when somebody was calling him. <laughs> and he recognized the voice. It was the young Vietnamese uh, who was with him uh, during his uh, preaching tour in Vietnam. And you know what he told to Rabbi Zacharias? You know the secret of this world towards success is God. And you know, my dear friends, this young Vietnamese, he became a very successful businessman in the U.S. From prison, you know, to, you know, a freedom in the U.S. As a businessman. My dear friends, the reason why he achieved success is because he saturated his mind with the word. Amen? You know the Bibles are Bibles. We are really lucky and we are really blessed. Amen? Because we are free to read the Bible. Nobody is stopping us. Amen? Nobody is hindering us from reading the Bible. Maybe our Bibles are just in our cupboards, they are just in our you know, cars, or they're just in our cabinets, and yeah, anytime we are free to read the Bible, nobody is stopping us to read the Bible. Amen? And I encourage you, my dear friends, to start reading the Word while there's still time. Amen? While we can still read. <laughs> start reading the Bible. I recommend that you start reading from the New Testament. Eh? From the New Testament, like the Gospel of Matthew. Just read one chapter a day. Eh? Read one chapter a day and then when reading the Bible, ask the Holy Spirit to guide and lead you. And just narrow down into one verse or one line and ask the Lord to speak to you in that one verse or one line. You know when you are reading the Bible, something in the Word will struck you in stop. And ask the Lord, Lord, what is your message for me? into this word. Speak to me, O Lord. Your servants listening. Amen? Amen. Can we give a clap of rain there? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
What's next? Wish. Alright? In Matthew 7, 7, ask it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. So brothers and sisters, God wants us to ask for our daily bread. For anything that we need. He wants us to knock at the door and the door will be opened to us. He wants us to seek and we shall find. He wants us to ask and we shall receive. Amen? That's a uh, the part of prayer where we are free, you know, to ask anything from Him. And uh, again, I have another story to tell you. It's not as serious as uh, <laughs> the first story. One time there were three men, they were stranded in an island. Their ship, no, their boat, the boat that they, they rode in going to that island was destroyed because of a powerful storm. And they were stranded in the island. There, were, there was no communication. No cell phone, you know, no internet, and their loved ones, they do not know that they are in that island. And yeah, it's really lonely in the island, three of them. And one time, one of the guys saw a bottle floating in the sea. And they picked the bottle, and when they opened the bottle, a genie came out, you know. <laughs> and the genie said, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for opening the bottle. I am now free. As your reward, make a wish. <laughs> Three wishes, and they will come true. And the first guy uh, told the genie, Oh, how I wish that I, I could go back to Manila, you know, and be with my parents, be with my uh, loved ones, and my wife and my children are waiting for me. I really miss them. Brothers and sisters, as soon as he uttered this word, he disappeared immediately. <laughs> and... He just found himself in Manila, okay? And then the second guy, he said, Oh, how I wish that I could go back to Cebu, you know, in order to see my girlfriend, because we'll, <laughs> because we'll be marrying in December. Si <laughs> And the genie said, Go ahead, as you wish. And then suddenly, he disappeared. And the guy just found himself with his girlfriend at Cebu. <laughs> and the third guy said, oh my gosh, it's really very lonely here. Where are my two friends? They are gone. <laughs> we are big goodbye with each other. Can you just bring them back? <laughs> and suddenly the two guys uh, <laughs> appeared in this front. Uh, and then the genie disappeared, brothers and sisters. Because the wish is already granted. Three wishes is already granted. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, uh, the reason why I told you this story, because uh, when Jesus uh, said in John 10, 10, that I have come to give you life, and life in abundance. Meaning to say, my friends, that we can, you know, present any wish that we can, you know, imagine before God. Countless of wishes, my dear friends, we can, we can present it before God. And yeah, we're not just limited into three wishes. Amen? You know, when we're praying to God and, uh, you know, we have already made three wishes, God would, wouldn't say, oh, tama na. <laughs> three wishes na yan. <laughs> he wouldn't say that. He would just say, come on, my son, come on, my daughter, make a wish. Uh, uh, ask me, what, what, what need? Do you want to receive at the moment? What blessing do you want to receive at the moment? How can I bless you at the moment? Now, brothers and sisters, yes, we're not limited to three wishes. Because we have in our possession, at our disposal, an unlimited wishes that we can present before God. Amen? Hallelujah. Can we give a clap over in our Praise the Lord. And the last but not least is wash. <coughs> wash. So we allow the Lord, brothers and sisters, to wash us. And uh, in Psalms 19, verse 12, but who can discern their own errors? Forgive by hearing voice. You know, most of the time, we are not really aware of who we are, isn't it? We are not aware of our mistakes. 
We are blind to our errors. We are blind to our failures. And it will take somebody to, to see our errors and our mistakes. And sometimes we cannot even smell our own. Right? If you have body odor, sometimes you cannot smell our bad breath. You know, it will take other people to smell. You know, in the spiritual realm, that's also true. That uh, it would take God to pinpoint areas of our lives that need to be changed. Areas of our lives that need to be changed. Now when we come before God, we ask the Lord to wash us. We ask the Lord to just pinpoint areas of our lives that need to be changed. Areas of our lives that need to be reformed. Areas of our lives, brothers and sisters, that need to be removed. When we come before God, we'll ask Him, Lord, what are the areas of my life that are preventing me from becoming a better person? What are the areas of my, my life that are preventing my growth? What are the areas of my life that are hindering into the fulfillment of the dreams that you have placed in front of me. So we come before God and ask Him to wash us and renew us and become a better person. Amen? So brothers and sisters, languages. Our languages before God is worship, word, wish, and wash. Four languages. Okay? And it will just take four minutes <laughs> to have an appointment with God. Start with four minutes. And I believe that God will be very happy. Amen? Amen. Can you give a round of praise to God? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, God. Can you all stand up, brothers and sisters? Brother Alan, can you see again the song is sung a while ago? How brave is our God? Thank you, Father, and thank you, Jesus, for visiting us today. Yes, Lord, we know that you have spoken to us. We know, Lord, that you have, you have given us your message. And your message, Lord, is very clear. That you want us, Lord God, to have an appointment with you. It's not because of you, Lord God. It's not for you, but for us. When we're having an appointment with you, that means that that's an opportunity for us to receive our blessings. An opportunity for us to receive the miracles that you have already installed for us. You have prepared for us. And today, O oh Lord God, give us the grace to really encounter you, O God, in prayer. Give us the grace, O oh God, Bless us, O Lord, that we'll be able to really give time, Lord God. We'll be able to, to share our precious time, Lord God, for you. Yes, O Father, today we would like to ask, Lord God, for that grace. That as we start, Lord God, our appointment with you, we hope that you will be with us all the way. As we develop, our relationship with you. Yes, day in and day out, you are with us, O God. We want to experience your presence every time, O Lord God, we give our time in prayer. Hallelujah.